present. present. Okay. Um, Chris Calhoun. I'm here and present. Ingrid DeLeon. No Ingrid DeLeon. I don't see her here, Ingrid. Uh, Bob Kaplan. I don't see her here, Bob Kaplan. Scott Crompinger. Present. Uh, Ted Morris. Well, Ted is not on our committee anymore. Sergio Villaverde. I don't see or hear Sergio. Okay. So um, the secretary's draft of the minutes was sent to everybody. So as I, I just said, we we don't have a quorum, so we cannot um, make an official vote on this. But uh, what I would suggest for this and for every other application or anything we do have to have a vote on, we're going to have an unofficial vote and we're going to bring that to the board and the board will um, take that into consideration and pass it or not pass it, depending, you know, usually. Okay, so the minutes were sent to everybody. Does everybody, uh, is there anybody uh, have any uh, objections about the minutes? Do we, do we propose to pass these minutes even though we can't vote officially? I propose to pass them. Okay, so nobody has any objections, the three of us. Um, so the minutes pass unanimously, unofficially, and we'll go to the uh, full board uh, with this recommendation to pass. Um, the uh, next order of business is the NYPD report. Um, I'm glad to, I, I met with um, Captain Soror earlier in the week um, in a Zoom conference with our board chair. Um, I think we had a very productive meeting. It was very nice meeting you, and I'm, I'm glad you're here. Um, take it away, Captain. It's the NYPD report. What do you got for us? Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, for anyone who was on the call that did not meet me before, I'm the new uh, commanding officer of the 50th Precinct. My name is Captain Philistine Soror, and I've been here for a little under a month now. Um, to talk about the crime, uh, let's just use a month period uh, for reference. We're even or down in most categories, except for three. There are three categories where there's a, a, a slight increase uh, in robberies, where we have seven versus six for the same period. So we have a difference of one uh, incident, but that accounts to 17% because of the low numbers. As far as burglary, we're 12 versus nine, which makes up 33%. The, those three incidents that caused the difference, however, were part of a pattern burglary where an arrest was actually made when I deployed the public safety team on overtime past their tour. They caught him breaking into a construction site that he's broken into two times in the past. So we've arrested him on that live burglary and on two uh, burglaries also in the past that he has uh, committed. And the category of uh, grand larceny autos where we have our big increase is 100% and we have 32 versus 16 incidents. And that's uh, probably the biggest crime that's plaguing the 5-0 right now is grand larceny autos and also crimes against cars, such as auto stripping, uh, the catalytic converters being exceptionally the hot topic here. Um, what we've done here in the 5-0 uh, since I've been here is formulated a plan to focus on a certain zone. So we identified the hotspots in the command and we've deployed our resources there after hours. So over the midnight on overtime, such as the public safety team. And on one day in particular, they had a lot of success. They arrested that burglar that I was talking to you about. They also caught someone breaking into a car and found him in possession of burglar tools like saws and also four catalytic converters that he had stolen recently. And they also got an arrest for uh, someone driving with a forged temp tag and they found narcotics on him as well uh, that he intended to sell. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you fine. All right, perfect. Yes, yes. Captain. Um, I'm happy to say though, though we do have a rise in those just those three categories and it's not an, an exceptional, exceptional rise. We are up 50% in arrests in just the seven major categories. So those are the, you know, the most serious crimes. We're up 50% in arrests for the same period. So that, what does that show? That shows that we are, are out there and trying to, trying to drive the crime down and trying to bring people to justice for the crimes that they committed. Um, that's it for a brief overview. Okay. Um, 
Before we go to the public, because I know there's a few people here from the public that have questions. Um, is there anybody on the committee that has any questions for uh, Captain yes. or the, uh, and the 50th Precinct? Uh, Scott Krompinger and then Chris Calhoun. Yes, thanks, Ed. Thank you, uh, Captain. Uh, my question is, with respect to the auto uh, theft, is there any particular location in the district that's particularly a hotspot? Not in particular, like I can't point out a certain area. There's a zone that encompasses three geographic areas within the, the 5 that we call sectors. So it seems to be on the lower half of, of what we call sector Charlie, most of sector boy, and then the very edge of sector Adam. So we drew a new box, a box that's just specific for this crime. That's not a sector box. It's just a GLA box, let's say. And we made a new plan to just focus in all three sectors in this box where these grand larcenies are happening and putting all our resources there. I mean, if you go drive around tonight near the Broadway Bridge, you're going to see um, checkpoints out there for my midnight cops and also the 4 to 12 cops that are all being um, basically forced to work on overtime, you know, past their two or three and four hours just to see if we could cast a big net in this zone and see what we can come up with. So that that uh, box is located in the southern portion, you said, near the Broadway Bridge, basically? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Chris Calhoun? Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome the captain to the uh, 5-0. Uh, I'd like to say is today, and without going into the particulars, uh, I happened to call the precinct about a blocked one-way street with caution tape on it blocked by construction professionals, I called the precinct, and not in 15 minutes, not in 20 minutes, in nine minutes, a traffic officer car was dispatched there from the NYPD and cleared up the situation. And I was just, I went, oh, OMG, like, great. And again, I welcome you to the community and really grateful you're at our meeting tonight. That's it. Thank you. I've made that a, a very big priority of mine. We spoke at the other previous meetings. I don't know if you were in attendance where I mentioned that I'm bringing down the 311 response time exception exceptionally. And I'm doing that um, by having my supervisors held accountable to deploying the officers to respond quickly. We also have tried to move around people from different platoons within the command so that we have an auto that handles 311s only so that they're not tied up on other jobs. And then the last thing is I asked my traffic safety officers um, to liaison with traffic agents. Uh, so we are building a partnership with them because traffic agents mostly focus all day on parking, whereas police officers have to respond to things like emotionally disturbed people and assaults in progress. So that takes us away from certain conditions that obviously upset your quality of life. So by working with these traffic agents that, you know, uh, Russia, one of them uh, has been in contact with them and, and making a relationship with them to help us out here. Captain, it was certainly noticed by me today and I just wanted to bring that out during this meeting. Thank you. I appreciate it, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, Mary Ellen, I don't see your hand up but I know you emailed me earlier about an issue that you had. Do you wanna bring that up with the captain or no? Oh, sure. The, um, there's this big construction, I I, I describe it, it sticks, it sticks out from the building. The actual address is 3220 Arlington Avenue, but this big monstrosity thing sticks out from the back of the building where they're doing work. And inside this, it has like a big cinder blocks going around, holding in the dumpster and all their equipment and a fence. But it's so stuck out in the middle of the street where we have, um, we have stuff on our side that you can only get into our building in one spot so when cars start to park especially like there was an ambulance there cars can't get through if there's another emergency if a fire truck or a cop car needs to go speeding through somebody's going to get either ran over or something's going to happen it is really really dangerous and then also one night i noticed there was a couple of guys hanging out under the awning there and then they were double parked, their car was double parked. And then they were looking at the cars over there on Netherland Avenue between 232 and 235, and then hanging out underneath where you really couldn't see them because that big thing was there. The two guys that were standing behind it, if you walk by as a pedestrian trying to get to where you're going at night, 
you're a hot item right there to get mugged because nobody can see you. I mean, it would be like quick and boom, and they'd be out in a double park car. So it's 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 a safety hazard. It's like a somebody could get hit by a you know, car or a safety emergency service. People can't get through if it was an emergency. So it's a real big disaster for it to be in the middle of the street. Okay, I have my special operations lieutenant who's on the call right now, and I'm sure he made a note of that address, as did I. And I'll have uh, the neighborhood coordination yeah, office. It's, it's on the back of the building. It's like I'm in 3220 Netherland, so it's right across from my building. So you said it's 3220 Arlington. It's Arlington, but it, it, the monstrosity sits on the back of the building where they're doing the construction. Behind the building. So it's across the street from my house, 3220 Netherland, between 232 and 235. All right, you got it. We'll have the neighborhood coordination officers go survey that and report back to myself and the lieutenant what we can do about it. Thank Mary you Ellen. so much and welcome. Mary Ellen, is that the Riverstone building behind St. Gabriel's? Yes. Okay, that might help, Captain. Okay, I got it. Okay, um, I don't see any more hands up from the committee. So is anybody from the... Uh... Jason, I know you had an yes, issue. Sir. I, I see your hand up too. Thank you. <laughs> Jason Godlowitz, you have a question? Yeah, thanks a lot. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, I had an issue regarding the uh, illegal parking in Marble Hill. Um, it's become a safety issue. You know, if you know the streets of Marble Hill, they're all very narrow streets. So whenever you have to make a turn, um, there's cars parked everywhere, um, particularly on Jacobus Place um, with his double parking. and it's it's prevents any large truck, fire truck, ambulance, bus. I leave for I'm a teacher. I leave for work in the morning between six thirty seven. I've seen buses that can't turn onto some of these streets because people are double parked, and um, it's become a real safety issue. And it turns out it's the same same group of people. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the website How's My Driving NY.com. You could uh, type in anyone's plate. It tells you the violations, how much they owe, everything. There is a guy that parks every night on Jacob, double parks on Jacobus Place every night, blocking one lane of traffic. The guy has, I looked the other day, almost 140 violations for the same thing. Um, so wondering how some of these cars, you know, with the fake plates, the one plate are just staying on the street all the time. And part of the issue too, as well, is um, they're accruing thousands of dollars worth of tickets. And instead of being towed, they just continue to get tickets on there. So is there a way to coordinate? I have some of these documented. I'm more than happy to share um, um, to get some of these cars off the street because it's really becoming a safety issue. Yeah, Thank there you. is actually, if, uh, if you would be so kind as to email me uh, the plates that you have, I don't want you to say them okay. out right now. On the yes, call. yeah. Um, email them to me and, and I will create uh, an operation, so to speak, where I'll send officers to go survey. And if they see those cars and it's true that they have a lot of violations and they're able to be towed, that maybe they could just have them towed. So I'll dedicate an entire tour uh, and a team of officers to handle that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Cause it's, it's again, it's, it's just a very small group of people. They keep doing the same thing. Yeah, so well, yeah, I that. yeah I'll if definitely... I get that information, I will strategically deploy them. Okay. My, my special operations Lieutenant who's on the call again, and uh, we'll pick a day. And we'll send out a team of cops who are just going to identify these cars, stand by them, call the tow truck, and have it towed. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hey, Jason, in your email, you also mentioned you mentioned several locations. I, I'm just going to pass this on to the captain, and you tell me if they're still relevant. So one would be Jacobus Place, which you said. The other is the corner of 228th and Marble Hill Avenue, and the corner yeah. of Fort Charles Place and Marble Hill, Marble Hill Avenue. Yeah in the corner of Adrian Avenue and 225th Street. Yeah, there's that. And then there's also the um, the issue of this building that's going up. There's a seven-story building going up right on 225th Street. And as it is right now, every every space in Marble Hill, legal and illegal, is occupied. So, <laughs> you know, now we're getting an, extra, an additional 60 cars. There's 120 apartments. They have a parking spot for half of those. So there's an additional 60 cars. I have no idea where these cars are going to park because it's already oversaturated. But um, yes, so those those are all areas where you have to turn. And with the double parking, it makes it very difficult for any large vehicle to do that. And and you also mentioned that you put in numerous 311 calls regarding this issue. And the reason I bring that up is because we had I, when I had a discussion with with you, Captain, earlier, we, we talked about 
possibly um, maybe monitoring that a little closer about how that's being handled. So I, I don't know if um, that, uh, I don't know if that's helpful. Um, actually, I am working on it still. Like I, you know, it takes time to sort of, now I'm start, starting to monitor. It takes time for a pattern to emerge and to figure out which officers responded to which call and to, and to be able to interview them and ask them what did they do, what do they remember. So that's going to take a lot of time and investigative work on my part as the boss. Um, but if I find out that officers are going somewhere and just sort of turning their head rather than dealing with the issue by either a summons or, as I've said, you know, if the car has several summonses, you shouldn't just issue it another one. Right. You should tow it. Um, the, you know, I will I will be dealing with that in in my own way. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Chris, I see, is your hand up from before? Or is your hand up again? It's up again. And I just wanted to concur with, I think the uh, gentleman's name was Jason. Yes, I can verify all of those spots he brought up. Jacobus Place is a disaster. They double park, the hydrants blocked every night. Fort Charles Place, you can barely turn the corner. I'm well aware of everything he said, and I just wanted to support him and what he just said. That's all. Thank you. Okay, great. So the the couple of the things that I was going to bring up have already been brought up, but the one last thing that I will bring up that was brought to my attention was, um, well, actually, the Riverdale Press did a story on this, <laughs> which I haven't read, but... Um, it's uh, stolen license plates and intentionally defaced license plates. Um, so, Captain, have you heard any? Is, has any of this stuff been brought to your attention recently? Oh uh, yes, we've had a few. Uh, we've had a few license plate thefts, mostly off of Honda CRVs, and I believe that's because the car that was stolen was a Honda CRV, and so they're looking for a plate that matches the make and model of the same car that was stolen somewhere else so that they could drive around in it. Um, the problem is if only one plate is stolen, the way to report that is lost property. If both plates are stolen, then we, we take uh, a report that the plates were stolen. So uh, we do have a few instances of both. Uh, this is not the only place that this has taken place. Uh, unfortunately, the auto crimes really started to spike after COVID. Once the DMV shut down and people figured out how to get away with uh, not going to the DMV and uh, you know making plates and getting around New York City without having to register or more importantly insure your vehicle because that's really the reason why they're doing it is to not pay insurance. Um, you know we see this uh, forged plate uh, crime rise a lot, and then also, like I said, if if someone's stolen a vehicle. The best way to get around driving it in New York City is to find the plate that matches the make and model of the vehicle you stole. So we've had, I think, six six total incidents where Honda CRV plates were taken in the in the past month. What what's the procedure for going about like if an officer sees a plate that appears to be intentionally defaced? What how, how does that work? Like I mean, because seems like people are doing this to avoid whatever, whether it be easy pass or you know anything you can imagine. Um, there's no really there's no procedure in place because plates can get damaged just with wear and tear and time and weather or accidents, fender benders, but officers often that will raise their suspicion if they're looking at the car for, for example, let's say he made a, a, a turn where he was not supposed to, that might raise their suspicion further that something's wrong with the car if the plate appears to be defaced because at that point we don't know for certain that it is and that might prompt them to stop the car and investigate further. Okay, Camelia, I see your hand is up. Yes, can I, can I go on? Ed? Absolutely, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Yeah, first, I just want to congratulate uh, the captain again. It's so exciting to be in a precinct where we have a female um, uh, commanding officer. So congratulations and welcome again. I uh, just wanted to add, um, so the other, on Wednesday, actually, I had to um, make an unexpected visit to the CDMB uh, there on, on Broadway. And it was the first time, and I was with my child, and it was the first time, actually, I saw a person literally uh, sleeping on the street against the wall right next to the entrance of, of CDMD at the mall there. He had his like cards, 
you know, one of these large shopping carts with like all his possessions and everything. And he was like covered with a blanket. So I, I'm, I know that the mayor is, is in the process of kind of changing the approach that NYPD interacts with the homeless population. And, and it was a mild night. And I mean, we seem like we, we are over the, like the winter, hopefully. So I was kind of just wondering, but it's still shocking, you know, like it's still shocking to see this, right? Um, so I was wondering kind of what's the current procedure, both in terms of protecting that person, if it's like a freezing night, or if it's a person with like a mental health, issues and and how is kind of that type of situation handling the person at the reception of cdmd was telling me oh we were so upset he's always there it makes us look better oh, you know that kind of approach so i was kind of just wondering if you could just give me like a brief you know like kind of how how if, if the precinct is involved and how are situations like this approach thank you sure so our the nypd policies uh, regarding dealing with homeless people have changed over the past couple of years. Currently, if we encounter a homeless person who is also emotionally disturbed, where he's a danger to himself or others, such as he's screaming or chasing people around or appears to be depressed or intoxicated, then we will forcibly remove that person to the hospital for their own safety. Other than that, if they are peaceful, if they are not interacting with anyone, uh, we are not able to forcibly remove them to a hospital. We are not able to forcibly remove them to a shelter either. What we what we do do is offer them services. And on very cold nights, we have operations that are borough wide where officers go out with homeless outreach who are professionals and have experience dealing with homeless people and are very good at convincing them to go somewhere warm where they're safe. And, and not gonna you know get hurt from the elements on the street. And that's it for now. Sorry, and just a quick question, but that would require the person's um, consent, correct or no? Correct, unless they are what we call an emo emotionally disturbed where they're a danger to themselves or others. I understand, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna have one more question for uh, the captain. I see Mary Ellen, your hand is up. Yeah, I have forgot something before. Um, scooters and e-bikes on the sidewalk. I mean, with a scooter one time, I had, there were two guys on a red scooter. When I was coming out of my building, all of a sudden, I had my room, room up behind me. And then they just kept coming for me, coming up my block, like they were going to grab for my bag or something. And then the e-bikes are flying up the blocks and almost like powering you down. So that's like a big problem. Those delivery guys, they come up on the sidewalk with the e-bikes and go flying up and down the blocks. Yeah, so, you know, unfortunately what, what happens is when people see a police car, they tend to behave better. And when they don't see one, they tend to do whatever they want. I mean, not everyone, obviously, but just the very small percentage of the population. So we have operations that we conduct periodically where we go to confiscate these bikes, whether they're chained up somewhere or we just look um, in the entire precinct in undercover vehicles to find people doing things like that, like driving the bike on the sidewalk. And certain bikes need to be registered depending on their size. And we we take their bikes away, basically, is what we do. So we've, we've been dealing with that for a very long time. Also, it's the beginning of COVID, you know, is, is where we're getting the more heavy now, too. Yeah, it's like a lot more. Because people cycle. figured out a, a nice way to get around the city that's relatively cheap. Uh, you know, you don't need a car. Yeah. And then the, the delivery people do need to make a living and that's uh, an easy way for them to deliver and save their costs. So yeah, we do see a, you know, a very high rise in that. Unfortunately, those same people do commit crimes on those scooters because they're you know, easy getaways. So we, we do focus on that and periodically we do do operations to take these bikes. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thanks a lot, Captain. And, and um... Thanks. It's going to be great working with you. We're going to um, go to the uh, liquor license applications now. And first up, we have a renewal. We have, is there anybody here from Jake's Steakhouse? Anybody from Jake's? I don't see anybody from Jake's. I don't hear anybody from Jake's. If you're from Jake's and you're muted. Okay. Nobody here from Jake's. Um, anybody from Aroma Restaurant and Bar? 
Nobody from Aroma. Okay. Aroma going once, going twice. Nobody from Aroma. What about Flame? Anybody from Flame? 5740 Broadway. This is a little surprising. Okay. Um, I know uh, there's somebody here from Wave Hill. Great performances. Michelle. Yes, I'm here with our attorney, Mindy Birnbaum from Great Performances. I'll turn it over to Mindy. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Mindy Birnbaum, the Chief Legal Officer for Great Performances, and I'm here with Michelle um, Rossetti, who's the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Wave Hill, and Chris Harkness, the Great Performances Vice President of Food and Beverage for Great Performances. Um, well, so thank you. Thank you for coming out. Oh, you're welcome. We, we are happy to come. We come every other year to say hello when we renew our liquor license. Okay, so um, it is a renewal for a full liquor license. Um, how's the business been? Any issues you guys are having or are you guys good or what's what's going on? Um, I guess that's I guess that would be more for the owner than the than the lawyer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Michelle um, has everything. Um, Everything at Wave Hill is, is going fine. Uh, we're seeing an increase in visitorship again, which is wonderful after the pandemic. We're not back to pre-pandemic uh, levels, but we're getting there. We also have a very full uh, private event calendar. Uh, so it's great. People are getting married. They're having wonderful events. Um, we've had no problem with um, anything liquor related, whether it's from the cafe or at the events. So everything is is good on our end. Great. Okay, fiftieth precinct. Uh, either captain or or one of the officers is. Has there been any issues at this location at Wave Hill um, with this particular business or up at Wave Hill that you guys are aware of? I have nothing to report. Completely clean. Okay, sounds good. So uh, unless anybody from our committee has any questions, uh. Oh, so like I said earlier at the meeting, we don't we don't have um, a quorum to have an official vote, but in in this case, I I'll go out on a limb and say it's pretty much a f formality. If we approve you, you're going to get approved because it'll go before the full board, even though it's not officially approved by the Public Safety Committee, and we'll just give our recommendation to approve it, and they vote on it, just as they would vote on it if we did have a quorum based on how we approve it. So that's just basically what's going on. Um, anybody from the committee have any questions? I don't see anybody, I don't hear anybody. So uh, committee, uh, if there's anybody who's not in favor of this application and wants to abstain, um, speak up now. I don't see anyone, hear anyone. So this application is approved unofficially by the uh, Public Safety Committee and will go before our full board with a recommendation, re recommendation to approve. So thank you for coming out and uh, thank you for your patience tonight. And thank you. Take care, have a good night. Thank you. Okay, and I know we have somebody from on Bielbach. Yes, Richard Caffrey here. Tony, everybody knows me as Tony. Tony, so yep. how you doing? Tony, you are, uh, who's Michael Kelly? Yeah, he's the uh, liquid lawyer. Ah, okay, time. and I, and you are, yep. you are I'm the owner. Ah, beautiful. Yep. yep. Okay. How's business? It's good. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, it's it's moving along. We're happy enough. Okay, thanks for coming out. So, uh, 50th, 50th precinct, um, four forty five West two thirty eighth Street on Bielbach. Any any anything to report about this business or that area? No, there's nothing, not a 311, not a 911 call or a complaint. Great, great. Committee, you got any uh, questions for the owner of Von Bielbach? No questions. Um, so let's take a vote. Um, anybody who's abstaining or is not in favor of approving this application, raise your hand or speak up. I don't see anyone, I don't hear anyone. So this application is 
Um, well, like I said before, we can't approve it officially because we don't have a quorum, but we will recommend that when this goes to the full board at our next board meeting for this, uh, that we anonymously recommend uh, this to be approved. So thank you uh, for coming out and uh, have a good night, I guess. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome to the new, our new captain also. Good, good to hear. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Okay. Do we have anyone here from Buffalo Wild Wings at 193 West 237th Street? I don't see anybody from or hear anybody from Buffalo Wild Wings. Um. Do we have anybody here from Smashburger? Nobody here from Smashburger. Okay. Do we have anybody from Neem Indian Cuisine? Do we have anyone from New Tokyo House? Uh, yes. Hi, who's this? Uh, my name's Jesse. I'm the manager of the Tokyo House. Okay, so um, you are a renewal application, correct? Uh, yes, for renewal, yes. Okay, at uh, 5648 Riverdale Avenue. Correct. Okay, how's the business? Uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. Good. Yes. Um, 50th Thank Precinct. You. Any issues with um, 5648 Riverdale Avenue, New Tokyo House, the business or the area? No, nothing. Okay, great. So committee, um, if you have any questions, speak up now. Well, let's take a vote on it. Um, anybody who objects to this or wants to abstain from voting on this speak up now i don't see anyone i don't hear anyone so this application uh will be recommended unanimously by the uh, public safety committee before the next full board um thank you for coming out and um we'll uh we'll approve this at our uh, next for uh at our, our next full board meeting thank you uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, so we have a new application for Mamawana Cafe Prime at 3541 Riverdale Avenue. Is there anyone here representing Mamawana? Yes. Hi, at long last. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm Jamie Quellis. Hey, Jamie. Um, okay, so... When I first saw this, I, I was a little confused because I know Mama Juan has come before us before. And this says this is for a new application and temporary retail permit. So uh, can you explain and for a full liquor license? So can you explain to me the circumstances of this and why this is coming before us for a new application when we've approved you in the past? Um, no, I, it's my first time. Uh, applying uh, and it's my first time uh, uh, in the business of restaurants. I'm a model and an actress um, trying to purchase this uh, Mama Juana Prime of, uh, from E. E. Corey. Got it. So you're a new owner. Yes. Got yes. it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, you know what? I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I reached out and, and inquired about this. And um, because I wasn't sure if this was supposed to be a corporate change or not, but I was, I've been told by the state liquor authority that this is fine. It's the proceed, fine procedural way to do it. So uh, everything is good. And um, uh, well, I have to ask, um, well, does anybody from the committee have any questions for Jemmy of um, Mama Wana Cafe? I probably have a few questions, but does anybody uh, from the committee have any questions? I'll leave it to you. My question would be just, is, is anything going to change with respect to what's being sold now and what's going to be sold in the future at the, at the restaurant? Um, well, no, I love the restaurant as it is. It's very family oriented and it's, it's, um, it's, it's positive for the community. If anything changes will be for the better. So 
Jimmy, so what what made you um, want to t- uh, take over this particular business? Is there anything in particular that made you want to take over this business? Well, I li- I've been living in Riverdale for the past six years. Um, I live here on 236 and Netherland Avenue. I go to all these restaurants all the time. Um, I love Mama Juan. I've been going there for a while now. That's where I met Iggy. And um, I always been interested in owning my, my own restaurants, my, my own business. And um, I had experience working in restaurants in Dominican Republic. Then I work here in Ting Marim with Henry. Um, and it's just the opportunity came up to me and I just, I just think it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for me to finally fulfill that dream of, of mine. And um, why Mama Juan, I mean, it's established a uh, restaurant and, and it represents what, what I am, which is the Dominican Republic, the food, the culture. And um, yes, that's why I'm very um, pushing forward to it. Okay, great. One thing I have to bring up, and I did speak to um, the SLA about this. So I I wasn't sure because I wasn't sure if this is going to be, initially, I wasn't sure if this was going to be considered a pre-existing business or a new business. But since you are a new owner, um, our community board requires any new owner to sign a 2 a.m. closing agreement, um, meaning that you agree to close the uh, the business by 2 a.m. for the first year. Um, Are you willing to do that? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we will vote on this and assuming, you know, we pass it, it will be contingent upon, um, I'll have our Bronx Community Board 8 staff send this agreement for you to, for you to sign. So you can Mm -hmm. send it back to them and our, uh, our vote will be contingent upon you signing that agreement. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay, so does anybody from the committee um, have any, uh, I, I'd like to, uh, you know, I'd like to pass this, um, I'm, I'm going to vote to pass this. Does anybody from the committee have any objections about passing this, uh, app- approving this application and, uh, or, uh, or uh, wants to abstain? I don't see any hands, I don't hear anybody. So the Public Safety Committee is going to um you know, approve this. We don't have a quorum, so it's not going to be official. But like I stated before, you'll have a recommendation to pass it, and it will be contingent upon us receiving a uh, 2 a.m. closing agreement. So thank you, uh, Jimmy, for coming out. And we'll have somebody get in touch with you. Um, I'll, I'll have one of the staff reach out um, to you probably tomorrow and um, send that agreement for you to sign and send back to them. Okay. Okay, and, thank you so much. And, I appreciate and, and, it. And, be, and best of luck. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to stopping by and seeing uh, yes, please I, I, do. Place. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Okay, have a good night, everybody. Okay, you too. Okay. Um, that does it. Unless, is there anybody here from any businesses that weren't here previously when we called your uh, name for uh, SLAs? Okay, nobody seems to be there. So um, we're going to go to, well, I'm just, I'm not going to spend, I don't think we're going to spend too long on this, but I did put illegal cannabis retail stores on the old business because I, you know, specifically because we have a new commanding officer here, but I, I did get a chance to speak with her about this in our meeting, but I wanted the committee and the public to know Um uh, Captain Soror, um, as far as these illegal cannabis retail stores, we had, you know, we had a big, um, you know, discussion on this last time, and I just wanted to know if, you know, we re- we did this before you were really involved in this process. So, um, what's your understanding of what's going on with this now since you've been here in terms of uh, possibly cracking down on the the many different you know, apparently many illegal illegalities that are going on here and, and um, how can the 5 all work in conjunction with other uh, agencies that have kind of been tasked to do this? And it seems it's it's almost seems like um, it, it's very a very hard thing to enforce at this point. So um, I don't know if you want to speak on that at all. Oh, yeah. 
the uh, the NYPD does not have anything in place right now where they go to purchase uh, marijuana. So in the past, when marijuana was illegal in New York City, what we would do is we would work with narcotics modules and uh, undercover officers, and we would buy marijuana or like a cannabis product, which is a marijuana derivative. So it, it falls under the same law. Um, since the laws have been changed, they are, you know, we as the NYPD have been stopped from making those kind of operations and making those arrests. Um, we don't arrest people for marijuana. Uh, that being said, there are other things that we can do with these businesses and other ways that we have been resourceful to realize that they've been a nuisance to the community and we find other ways to get in there and sort of uh, look for different inf infractions. Being that they're an operating business in New York State, they're subject to inspections whenever we would like. Uh, still, there are issues with taxes. We work with the New York State tax um, investigators. We do we do operations with them where they come out because they are the experts in the laws and they tell us what we can charge and what we cannot charge. We also go in there to do underage operations where we can find them selling uh, cigarettes or other kind of smoke products like um, the cigars. Some places have alcohol. And so we use that as a way to make arrests as well. So there's a, there's a myriad of things that we can do and we've done it. It's, it's not that we haven't, it's just not newsworthy. Uh, we've done it. And then when we arrest the people inside, if we find um, product that we are able to confiscate for forfeiture, we do that. Um, one of the things we spoke about the last time, and it seemed to me that places like this are most vulnerable um, with their license they're, because they're not they're not properly licensed that's just um, so I don't I don't know is there anything 50th precinct can do with I guess that would be the Department of Consumer Affairs or um, maybe yeah, we, the Sheriff's we, Department we do joint operations periodically with other agencies uh, so, you know so there are things that we don't enforce as a you know New York City police but yeah like you said there's a you know, this Department of Consumer Affairs, like you said, or the Sheriff's Office, the, the, the tax uh, authority. There's a lot of a lot of other agencies that we work with. When we do these operations, it's called a march operation. We don't go with just one. We don't go with just NYPD. We go with several. And, um, you know, it, it's just like I said, that in this New York City jurisdiction, those marijuana infractions are not something that's prosecutable. You know, mm -hmm. so we, ha we have to get, get other ways um, to deal with the business. You mean so operating without a license is not prosecutable? I so mean, not for, without it's a, a it's a civil. It's a civil matter. It's a civil matter. Uh, there's fines, you know, there's fines right. that they deal with, um, but not, not, right. not jail. So, you know, the NYPD, for lack of a better word, we deal with arresting people and, and prosecuting them criminally, right? Right. So, we try to find them doing the, the, the thing that NYPD has the authority to arrest. So if you sell to a minor, that's an arrest. If uh, you sell on tech cigarettes, that's an arrest under our jurisdiction. So, you know, as for the fines, we bring other agencies to look at, like the fire department, we bring them for code violations, like you said, consumer affairs to, to have the proper coding and authority to give um, monetary fines for the licenses. But we've done that in the past, and actually, we have one scheduled this week. I think I told you last week. You know. Okay. Yeah. One of the arguments has been that the fines are um, basically insignificant to them, which is it's something like two hundred and fifty dollars for operating without the license. But um, I don't really buy that. That's insignificant because if if people are hitting them every day for that, that's a, it adds up to eight grand a month. I don't know too many small businesses. That oh, can yeah, well, they don't go every day. I'll tell you that. There's so many smoke shops. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. I mean, we have 15, about 15 just in the 5 and And we don't have the highest number. We have a very low amount. Okay. Does anybody uh, from the committee or the public have any, uh, any want to bring up anything about this issue or, or can we move on? Chris Calhoun? They just seem to be multiplying like 
cockroaches. I can name a few in driving around the whole community in 10463 and 10471. And if I left anyone out, I'm sorry. Crepes and cannabis, cannabis dispensary, the newest one, the pot shop right across from Williams Funeral Home, Zaza Cloud and King Smoke up on um, Kapok or Kapok Street. I mean, they're not even hiding it. And I'm a little concerned about the individuals hanging out in front of these places. That's it. Thanks, Chris. Mary Ellen? Yeah, because on Facebook, on like the Riverdale page and everything, people are complaining like crazy about these places popping up. They say there are people hanging out, buying there and smoking outside. They say the one at 231st Street, they say, I mean, I, I can't say, you know, for sure because I wasn't there, but they say that the kids are buying it from there and smoking on 231st Street by the Chase Bank and everything. And the kids are hanging out all over the place over there smoking pot because they're buying it from these stores. I, I, it's just going to be a very big nuisance, these places, because of what's everybody's going to go in there and hang out and, and God knows what it's going to bring. It's just too many of them are popping up. Like first there was two and then like they're multiplying and multiplying. And I think it's a big problem and a big nuisance and, and could pop bring, bring on criminal activity. So oh, it does. I'm a little concerned yeah. about it. Um, we, I, since I've been here, I, I, where did you go? I lost you. Lost you. Here I am. <laughs> Completely lost you guys. Hold on. Oh, there you go. Uh, I <laughs> I had them uh, prepare a package that goes out to everybody in the precinct. It's called the deployment package. Um, and basically in it, it has a lot of information about the precinct and things that the cops should focus on. It's information for them to know where they should go and place their vehicle and place their attention. And one of the pages that I have there, and I'm looking at it right now, it says directed patrol smoke shop locations. And I have a list of 11 smoke shops within the command. I believe it's all of them. Uh, I heard uh, I heard um, Chris name a few of them, uh, like King Grava, uh, Zaza Cloud, Cannabis Dispensary. They're on here. So what I've ordered them to do is while they're out on patrol in between answering 911 calls, they're to visit these places. And, and by visiting, I mean drive around in front of them and address any kind of uh, any kind of uh, condition that they see, like people hanging out and sort of move them along or just place their presence there so that you know the area is stable for as long as they're there. So they, they, are, they know that they have to pay attention to these smoke shops. It's, uh, it's a condition not just here, not just in the Bronx, it's a citywide condition. And you're right, they are connected to a lot of crime. They get robbed at gunpoint, uh, they get hurt. And the reason is that they're, even though they are causing you a lot of nuisance, they're actually a very vulnerable victim because not only is there money in there and the money that they made all day, but there's also drugs. So it's a, it's a lucrative business to rob, so to speak. Okay. Uh, the only, I left out before, your, your community officer that are on tonight, when, the, when they're up on Johnson Avenue, excellent. They, they, they communicate with the people on the street and very friendly and, and they're very good community officers. I'm, I'm very lucky to have them. I, I know Rush. Yeah, very friendly and they really were, interact a lot. She was out for hours moving cars for hours. And, and yeah. no one knows her to. She just listens to, to your concerns and uh, dedicates yeah. some part of her day. And that's not part of her assignment. That's just her love for you guys. Right. They work hard out there. They're very excellent officers. I'm lucky. I'm lucky between her and uh, Conejo. Very lucky. Okay. Thank, thanks a lot, Captain. Um, I'm just going to, before we go on to um, budget requests, I, I'm just going to circle back briefly to see if there's any uh, business owners that we that may have not been here when we called your business for SLA. Is there anybody here uh, still in this uh, Zoom meeting for uh, a state liquor uh, license renewal or? Yes, no, I see some, mm, I guess not. Okay. Would you like to hear about anything uh, about those businesses or only when they're present? 
Uh, I'd like to hear about them. Um, well, I mean, obviously, when they're present, that you know. But I don't know if that if that matters go, because go ahead, them, go, go ahead, shoot. Sure. Flame um, only has one parking complaint. Nothing else. Jake's outstanding place. Not no, nothing to report. And you know, we work very well with them. It's a very classy establishment. Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, same thing. Nothing to report. Um, all Beal. Light. I think we went over nothing to report. Yeah. And uh, Mama Wana Cafe just had uh, it had three uh, noise complaints. Um, one on February 9th and two on the 19th. Music from the speakers on the sidewalk on the weekend. That's okay. it. Well, hopefully the new owner won't be uh, doing any of that stuff. So we got a new 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 sheriff in uh, town over there. Um, so thank you. That's excellent. I'm 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 very happy that uh, it seems like you did some homework on that, which is which is great. We definitely we definitely need that because we've you know most of the businesses in our area are are terrific. You know we don't really have problems. You know fortunately, like a lot of other places with the businesses, but every once in a while we do have some a uh, couple of business, just a very few businesses that are extremely disruptive to the uh, area. And so we like to keep track on what's going on with, with some of these places. Um, so updated public safety committee budget requests. So the, the last time we went over this before, um, it was the last meeting before you were here, Captain. Um, let me just go over this real quick. Excuse me. So... The items that were brought up, um, and I think, is Lieutenant Taney still here? He was here earlier. Well, okay, uh, here he goes. <laughs> um, so the things that were brought up were two sound meters to measure noise decibel levels. That was one thing that was put on. I, I don't know if any of this resonates with you or or, or or if you feel that this is it because I'm, I'm just going to break this down you know you weren't here the last time but what we touched on this briefly in the meeting we had but what we're trying to do is we we want to give you guys the tools you need to you know to improve public safety in our community so you know, we're going to have, we're probably, our committee members are going to come up with ideas that, you know, we would want to put in the budget, but I always feel let's, let's ask the 50th precinct first, because they know what, they know what they need. You guys know what you need as far as the tools. And if we are able to get that put in the budget and get the, um, you know, powers that be to fund you for whatever you need, then that's, you know, that's the goal. So um, I'm just, you know, before I, ask you what you need. I'll just tell you what was brought up. So what was brought up was two sound meters to measure noise decibel levels. And, you know, it's one of the reasons is that we, we have, we do have businesses that, as you mentioned, they put speakers out or whatever, there's, there's noise complaints. So we want to see if these, uh, these businesses are, you know, violating whatever the uh, standards are for noise. So we could start taking action against them. Um, that would be one thing. Um, the other thing that was mentioned was four tint meters to measure tint levels on car windows. Now, I don't know how, you know, that was something that was brought up. I don't know how relevant that is in, in your eyes, but um, that was another thing brought up. And the other um, that I had requested that we did not receive yet that I, I'd really like to get soon because we have to submit this um, in a timely manner is um, we need a detailed list of the locations that the 50th precinct can use Argus cameras. Um, so we, you know, we've had old lists in the past. Um, we need new lists to where you guys need it. I mean, I, I don't know if this is something you can come up the top of your head, but if, 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 if you can do a little research on it and, and find out what areas would be, uh, what you would need cameras, um, we are on a little bit of a, a, a time schedule. Uh, our budget chair, David Gelman, is actually here tonight. Um, David, what's the deadline for these again? Well, um, as I, oops, I'm sorry. Um, as I, I've noted, um, 
uh, the, the idea was to sort of start collecting uh, items uh, in January and, and sort of put them to paper uh, this month, uh, tonight, really. Uh, but th it's not set in stone by any means. Um, and then um, next month uh, at the meeting, put them preliminarily in a priority order for both capital and for expense lists. And then in April, uh, uh, finalize it. I would note one thing, if I, if you don't mind, uh, uh, Ed. Sure. I think the sound meters would not be NYPD. I believe that's uh, DEP. Believe it or not. So um, I, I don't. I think they're the ones that would uh, possess the uh, the noise meters, and they are the ones that would give out um, the summonses. Isn't that true, Captain? So yeah, they usually have it, but we are also allowed to use it. We just we don't have them for the most part. Right. That's what I was told, David. Also, is that is that they they um, a couple of officers would be trained to use them. They and and if they could get them, they could use them. But a couple of officers needed to be trained to use them. That's what I was told. Okay. Uh, thanks for the clarification. Yeah. Um, so so, so the idea is yes, you 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 want to uh, create some sort of preliminary list uh, tonight, um, two lists: the capital uh, priorities list and the expense priorities list. Um, yep. And then uh, next month, um, preliminarily put them in order, and by um, April twenty one, twenty uh, first. Sorry, um, uh, your meeting should probably be before then. Um, your committee would decide the final order and get them into the office by April 21st and to me as well. And, and just, it, just do, do it in a, a word format. Some people are starting to do Excel spreadsheets and no, I'm not, I, I'm up. word, I'm a word guy. Oh, okay, and David, good. just to clarify, um, for anyone who might not be clear about this. So the capital and, and expense, um, capital would be roughly anything over 30,000. 35,000. It's a oh. it's a weird arbitrary number that the city uses. I mean, in my finance uh, arena, capital means something that's going to be there for five or 10 years. Um, and expense is something that'll be around for one to five years. And that's how you decide. But for whatever reason, the city uh, defines uh, capital budgeting as an item over 35,000. Okay, which the Argus cameras have fallen under. They are cap. They are a capital expense. It's an investment. Yeah. Well, yep. again, unfortunately, the, the, that logical criterion isn't used. It's strictly <laughs> what's the bottom line uh, number for the purchase. So I'm a little surprised that the cameras are individually are thirty five thousand. Uh, I don't, mm, I'm not sure individually, but I know as they count as a capital budget because I, they're, they're, they're bunched, I guess, together. I, I don't know the rationale for it, but it's been on in past years, they've been, they've been on the capital budget. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, captain, um, sometime soon, I guess when, whenever you guys can, we, would uh, if you have if you guys have know of locations that it would be helpful to you to have Argus cameras, um, we may send you requests because the community a lot of times like I'll I'll speak with the uh, the chair of the uh, economic development and they a lot of the businesses covet these things because it kind of protects their business and and, and it is a public safety issue it, you know stuff outside in the in front of their uh, stores or oh. restaurants but um, you know. I will be happy to give you a list of like a good place to put Argus cameras in the 5-0 that might help us, um, you know, deal with the robberies and the grand larceny autos, the catalytic converters and businesses, like you said, uh, I think they would benefit from having cameras, obviously. Uh, the nice thing about these Argus cameras is that, is that they record 24 seven and, um, you know, they, they capture a very wide, very wide picture. You know, and like you said, they're connected together. So they're put together. So if someone commits a crime, you might be able to follow him for several, several blocks. Um, there's also something called the pole camera, which is put in a location where we're having a very uh, large increase in crime. And that one might be closer to the ground 
which is good for capturing a facial image. And once we get a facial image off uh, a camera that's closer to the ground, we're able to figure out who that person is by using facial recognition software that the NYPD has. So that, that's another thing I'd be interested in, in giving you maybe one location or two locations where we would benefit from a poll camera. Um, this is my first time dealing with um, anyone that wants to give us money to sort of help us do our job. So I'm kind of like, I'm on the spot and I'm not sure what I'm allowed to ask for, but I'll tell you some issues that we're facing here. And I don't know if you could help us out or, you know, or how, how you go about it. I'm sure you go in, 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 a, in, a, in a way to deal with the city, right? We're, we're the ones requesting it, Captain. So feel free to ask anything that you think you need because it's not really coming from you. It's coming from us. We just want to know what the needs of the, the precinct are and um you know we can send it and you know hey we'll ask we can ask for a lot it doesn't mean we're going to get it but we yeah. we, we, we do we have, have a good, pretty good history if, if i can clarify just one thing Go ahead, uh, uh captain just please be aware that these are our budget requests that we're making we oh. don't actually have a budget to say ah oh, yes we will go out and buy you three argus cameras right. we can request three argus cameras i see yeah that's perfect um, okay we're we're here. We have a a problem that's been plaguing our vehicles. It's a uh, a rat problem out in the back in the parking lots, and they eat our cars and cause them to go out of service a lot. So, not sure if you could help with that either by requesting cars or requesting some sort of company to help us out with that. Um, other than that, we have an issue with personnel. Again, you know, I've explained to Ed that that usually goes through our borough and you know, the chief of, of uh, personnel, but you as a community, if you're able to shed light on our shortage here at the 5-0, uh, maybe you'd be able to help in that way. So a, a lot of that probably is going to depend on what the personnel is used for. Like we've, we've requested um, uh, school safety agents, and I don't even know if that, whose jurisdiction that is at this point, that might be uh, not it. even... What's that? It's the NYPD. They're under. Okay. Us. Okay. Um, and uh, traffic agents. So you're you're just speaking about more, you know, more uh, police officers, basically, right? Yes, we have a shortage here. Um, that prevents us sometimes from turning out enough uh, teams of officers to answer jobs and also to back each other up. But sometimes they go somewhere dangerous um, by themselves, and they need to have more. Right. And as you know, unfortunately, a lot of a lot of they justify this. We're, we're lucky that we live in an area that doesn't have as much um, violent crime as some other areas. But unfortunately, that's usually the criteria that they judge um, necessity of uh, additional officers for. But of course, we'll you know. I, we when we're requesting, I we I would think we would have to make a request in terms of something specific, like officers for the um, police athletic league, or or, or I, I don't. Mm, we'll we'll have to put our heads together on this one. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, Mary Ellen, you have your hand up. Trying to get that mute button go off. <laughs> um, the 235th Street overpass, I was thinking maybe if there could be a camera there, because I mean, I myself even are uncomfortable on that because so many characters are back and forth on that. And people and elderly people who shop go over that saying that they're uncomfortable because there's like usually a cast of characters coming up. I almost got mugged almost entering that right where the um, Columbia building was. And when I called, 911, we had the doorman. The doorman pulled up his his cameras on the building there, and they didn't want to even come in and see it. I go, well, how are you, how are you going to look for them if you don't see who you're looking for? And they go, oh, we have your number. We'll call you. Okay, I'm still waiting. That was like months ago. But it's it's getting pretty weird over on that overpass. And the lighting, it gets like pretty bad over there too, over on that overpass. So maybe a camera and some lighting would do some good on that. All right, I'll make a note of that. And um, Captain, the other thing is, okay, so she just mentioned 235th Street overpass. I think a lot of times uh, cameras being put in certain areas 
the I don't there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason of the ones that they give us and the ones that they don't. We've been pretty successful in, in you know, in the last few years of getting cameras. But I would think that they would have to do with uh, reported criminal activity and in those particular areas being um, the factor in us getting them in the areas. So that's. I think yeah, that makes sense. I'm sure it is, because uh, uh, most of the places that we have. Um, not just here in other precincts that are considered high traffic or unsafe or have a history of violence. Yeah, there's cameras. Okay. Um, Chris Calhoun? Yes, Ed, as promised, I have a couple of things for you. Great. On the Argus cameras, um, I suggest the intersection of Mashaloo and Tyndall Avenue. Mashaloo Avenue has become quite... Uh, a nice shopping district from Broadway all the way up uh, the street up to the Riverdale neighborhood house and beyond. And right in the middle there, it gets very desolate. I already know the supermarket on that street and a couple of other businesses within the past year were hit. And I think a camera of that uh, faction would maybe mitigate what's going on there. My other item for you is the Marble Hill Playground, which borders Kingsbridge Avenue, 230th, 228th Street, just down from the precinct. It's a dark box. All the lighting, there's none in the park. It all comes from the outside. And I think that could use some interior lighting just to mitigate and light it up. That's where what is, I have. What, where, is, where is that address again, Chris? Uh, which should you want the, the lighting or the, the lighting issue oh, the, that's Marble actually a park is runs from 230th to 228th street kingsbridge avenue marble hill avenue right near saint stephen's church it's a really dark box there it's just down the street from the precinct chris that's actually a park and uh, uh the parks committee is going to meet tomorrow you may want to check with deb travis on that yeah, and so that, also so Dave, that wouldn't come under public safety. It would come under both. We can have a joint resolution for that, but it's a good idea by David because, um, and I could reach out to Deb with that too. Some of these issues that you know they're crossover issues. They're public, and 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 actually, if committees uh, join, uh, make a joint uh, requ budget request, it usually carries a little more weight as far as the board having it as a higher priority on our list. So, um, yeah, definitely bring it up with, with, and, and I'll, I'll mention it to Deb too, but if you're, you're at that meeting, bring it up because, and say that, well, you know, the public safety committee, uh, uh, wants to do this also. That's great. If when I saw you, I said, I come with something and I wrote a couple of things down. Okay, yeah, I know wanted... it's great. Actually, Chris, you may want to talk to Deb about lighting at the park, but Correct. you may want to speak with the captain about whether that's a high crime location, which might merit an Argus camera. I, I honestly don't know. So li lighting is always a good thing. Lighting is always a good thing, especially near housing. And uh, I know that housing has their own cameras, but for around their building complex. So I, I would have to go visit this park to see if it's in view of the NYCHA cameras. But lighting is always a good thing. I mean, it, clearly he's thinking about the safety of the kids that play around there. So Kit, uh, Chris, you're talking about lighting in that area, not a camera, correct? Well, I'm talking about lighting in that area. I was talking about the camera on um, right. Marshall and Marshall. I got that the one. The, I the lighting would be for the park because it's it's dark. I just wanted to, because this is what I got. Tell me if this is coherent. I got 230th Street to 228th Street, Kingsbridge Avenue, and what? Uh, it, it Kingsbridge and Marble Hill Avenue meld right there. I don't know where they end, but it's right there. You got the zone. It's right there. Okay. Okay. Got it's it. immediately west of the Marble Hill House there. It's a oh. uh, little bit set down from the street. But it's called, I think it's called the Marble Hill Playground. Yeah, with the basketball That's, courts, all right. And it's got, for, for what it's worth, it's got a really cool uh, historical sign about the King's Bridge from the 19th century. Okay. Actually, 
right about that. And you can actually stand in there and see where you're crossing from the Bronx into Manhattan. Correct. That has nothing to do with the lighting, though. No, uh, no it doesn't. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chris. David, is your hand up from before? No, I, I, I just want to check one thing. Uh, Captain, when we talk about the Argus, um, we, we are assuming that um, either the 5-0 or a central location in the, in the Bronx or down 1PP has the capacity to record uh, and review um, the camera uh, recordings. Yeah, the nice thing about Argus is we all have that ability. We have that ability from our desktops and our phones as well. So we're able to do, you know, playback live on scene from, let's say, you know, God forbid, if a shooting happens, we're able to look at them while on scene to figure out what happened or get a picture to do a want to flyer and blast it out right away. Um, if I could give a recommendation for an Argus camera right now, I would choose 230 in Kingsbridge, which coincides with what um, Chris was saying about needing lighting that will give us a different angle on Marble Hill houses that we don't have already. And also Kings Ridge has been a pretty uh, busy place for us, uh, especially in the summer, that area gets um, pretty lively, we'll say. And it's a common way for people to escape from committing crimes. And so following them using Argus would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Is that Kingsbridge Avenue or Kingsbridge Road? Um, Avenue. Avenue. 230th and Kingsbridge Avenue. You know, I could have sworn we had uh, we requested one for there. there. There's definitely not a camera there at 230th and uh, I'm uh, not in the angle that covers the playground. There's there's a camera at 228th Street and Marble Hill Avenue. The captain's right. Nothing at 230th Street that covers that playground. OK, I think that that would definitely be a good one. So um, just to make everything clear we have one we're gonna add these to our list we have uh, argus camera at 230 230th street in kingsbridge avenue and argus camera at 235th by the 235th street overpass marion is there a what's the cross street over there um it's heavy what was it? it would be heavy hudson parkway east 235th street the overpass and then Cross is over. When it crosses over, I think it's 236th Street. The opposite no. side, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Henry Hudson Parkway West. West, right? West? West. West to east. Okay. okay. So you want it at the at the oh, bottom yeah. or on the overpass? On the overpass. Okay. On top of the overpass. On the overpass. Is there, just, there anyone I'm, on the building? I'm, I'm, can I talk, David? On the on the on the east side already has a camera they can that picked up where I was where I almost got mugged. The Columbia building has a has a camera there, but it's up on the overpass. It gets dark, it needs lighting, and it needs a camera there because it's it's gotten really shady. It's graffitied. It's a lot of people hanging out. There was uh, Antifa graffiti up there, BLM graffiti up there. It's it's getting pretty seedy up there. Okay, so we'll we'll just put I, the reason I just wanted to clarify because we have to be pretty concise when we put this in. So I mean, I oh. I'm just going to put 235th Street overpass by Henry Hudson Parkway on the overpass. We'll specify on the overpass. Right, goes east to west, or west to east. Whatever. I, I would doing. say uh, 235 pedestrian overpass. Very good. Yep. Okay. Um, and lighting at 230th Street to 228th Street, Kingsbridge Avenue, Marble Hill Avenue, uh, and also August Camera at Marshallu and Tyndall Avenue. And, you know, I just want to, Captain, you mentioned earlier the pole cameras, and this is the, really the first I'm hearing about this three years here. Um, so it's... Uh, I'm pretty sure we've never requested. I've, I've never even heard of a pole camera. We just always talk about August cameras. So a pole camera is um, what's what's the difference? It just can is able to get somebody's face clearer, or it's lower to yeah, the ground. It has the ability where it's not as uh, high, high set, um, and it, it's more specific to a one location that we want to focus on. So I would have to, I would have to, you know, look at the command and, and pick a place where I think I would benefit from that. Um, just that one camera focusing on this location. It's it's more of a pinpoint 
pinpoint camera. Okay, so think about that. And if you even if you have multiple locations, let us know because it's you know, you, you know, we might as well go for it because they, you know, they're gonna give us what they give us, what they say is in the budget. And like right. I said, we've been successful in the past getting these things. They don't always you don't always get them in the first shot, but we we like do you said, there's nothing wrong with asking. So right. You don't ask, you don't get, right? I, I will get you a few locations for that. Great. Um, so with that, is there any, is there any new business anybody has, anybody wants to bring up from the committee or from the public, any new business? Okay. I don't see anybody and I don't hear anybody. So, Chris is that up. oh, Chris. I Go just ahead. want to say again, a big welcome to the new captain of the 5-0 everything she said tonight put a smile on my face that's all i have to say very good so you can go to sleep with a smile on your face very good thank you so much <laughs> um captain thanks thank you as well um and so with that do we have a motion to adjourn this meeting you yes. got one well, second. Right. Second. we have a second and you know what's funny so i don't well we don't have a quorum, so that means we can we can never leave this meeting. We have to stay here forever, you know. So we want to talk and, about spring training. The, <laughs> the meeting is adjourned, everybody. Have a great night and good night, Gracie. Uh, good night, uh, Gracie. Uh, hey. good night thank you. Good night, you didn't call everybody. me in attendance. Uh, I know you're here. I got you, Mary Ellen Gibbs. You here? You here? Yes, I'm here, present. Very good. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Take care. Night.